Okay, this is our follow-up discussion on the nitration of acid analyd that we performed in lab. And we're going to talk about the hidden effects of that sulfonation that the lab text didn't tell you about, but that I told you about in lab lecture. So just to remind ourselves, the reaction is an um, electrophilic aromatic substitution. So we have an electrophile, right? The electrophile is attacked by a pi by pi electrons from the aromatic system, creating a carbocation intermediate. But the aromatic system is very stable, and so the system wants to retain that aromatic stability. So instead of having a nucleophile attack that carbocation, a base can take that hydrogen ion, freeing the electrons to fall back into the aromatic system, and recreating that aromatic system where the, the electrophile or a group related to the electrophile has replaced the hydrogen that was there at the beginning. And so when we did our lab lecture, we talked about that, that when you add the sulfuric acid at the start, in sulfuric acid there is sulfur trioxide. And so there would be a first electrophilic substitution where so the sulfur trioxide acted as the electrophile. It would go on to the ring, but we didn't know where. And so what we're going to talk about today is how do we figure out where it went. Then we added a mixture of nitric acid and sulfuric acid. That created the nit uh, uh, nitronium ion. The nitronium ion acted as a second electrophile to substitute on the aromatic system. But then when we added the water to quench the reaction with the sulfuric acid that was there, that caused a desulfonation reaction. The sulfonate was removed, leaving only the nitro group. And then we were going to hydrolyze the amide, creating a nitroaniline those have very defined melt melting points, and we were going to identify whether the nitro ended up in the ortho position, next to the nitrogen, in the meta position, or in the para position, based on melting point. So that's the, the, a reminder of the basics of our laboratory. Okay, so we need to talk about directing groups. Right? So here we have a substituent on our benzene ring, and the D means this is an electron donating group. It's something that has an unshared pair of electrons, and so it can donate that pair of electrons in appropriate positions. So here we look, if this is our, if this is our position where our substituent is, then next to it is ortho, the next one is meta, and the next one is para. So here we're showing our electrophile becoming attached at the para position. That creates our carbocation, but that carbocation is stabilized by resonance. So if we talk about resonance here, if this electron pair shifts over, we get this carbocation position, but that is a carbocation next to an atom with an unshared pair of electrons. That unshared pair can come in, and so we can create a resonance stabilization where the electron donating group carries part of the positive charge. So our positive charge here is, just in the structure shown, shared among one two, three atoms. That resonance stabilizes our carbocation, and so interaction of our, um, uh, our electrophile at that 
paraposition is favored because of that resonance stabilization. Okay? So here's our, right? So that was case one. In case two, here's our electron donating substituent. So here is our attack on our electrophile. The position right next to it would be ortho. So here our electrophile, our electrophile is attached to the ortho carbon. That puts our carbocation right on the position where the donating group is. And so resonance will stabilize that carbocation. And so resonance stabilizes that cation. And so ortho, so a para attack might be favored and an ortho attack might be favored. But if we come down here, if this is our group, right, and here's our electrophilic attack, it is going to become attached here. This is ortho meta. No matter how we do the resonance, right, if we do the resonance, that positive charge might be there, it might be there, or it might be there, but it can never be there. And so there's no particular case where our carbocation is particularly stabilized by resonance with the electron donating group. And so in case three, the meta case, we find that para is favored ortho is favored, meta is not favored in the same way. So an electron donating group tends to direct the next substituent either para or ortho or both. If we look at an electron withdrawing substituent, some electronegative atom that doesn't have an unshared pair of electrons, again, if we look at the same series, so if we look at a para interaction, we see that there is the one carbocation here where our electron withdrawing group is trying to pull electron density away from our carbocation. Right? So we're pulling electron density that way. Okay, that pen size might have been a little large. Right? But we pull electron density away. That particularly destabilizes that particularly, I'm sorry, that particularly destabilizes that carbocation. And so that tends to work against attack at a para position. Right? If we look at situation two, the ortho attack. Right? In the ortho attack, again, there is a carbocation form where the carbocation is directly affected by that electron withdrawing group. I get my pen up here again. Right? So the electron withdrawing group is going to be pulling electron density away from that carbocation that already is electron deficient that will destabilize that carbocation and it will tend to work against an ortho attack. But if we look at situation three, the meta attack, right? There is no one cation where our electron withdrawing group is directly affecting the carbocation. The carbocation might be there. If we do resonance, it might be there, and it might be there. So, the electron withdrawing group can't directly affect the positively charged carbon. And so, while an electron withdrawing group always reduces the reactivity of a benzene ring, so these are all less reactive than if there was an electron withdrawing group, it affects para and ortho more than it affects meta. And so, an electron withdrawing group tends to favor substitution at the meta position, but that substitution occurs more slowly 
than if there were an electron donating group on the benzene ring. So that's the, the logic of direction. So this is what we have to think about with our laboratory. Right? If we look at our acid analyd, what it looks like depends on how we draw the Lewis structure. In this first Lewis structure, in Lewis structure A, the nitrogen looks like it has an unshared pair. That is, it looks like it could be a substituent that donates electron density. Right? But in resonance structure B, it doesn't have it is an electronegative atom without an unshared pair. And if it acts more like that, it could be an electron withdrawing substituent. And so that's why we don't really know in the first reaction where our sulfonate group is going to end up. Is our subs is our substitution our our acid our acetylated amino group? Is it going to act donating and direct either ortho or para, or is it going to act like a withdrawing group and direct our substitution meta? We just don't know, and so that's what we're trying to figure out through the process. Now, if we consider this. If we look at the different possibilities, it will help us out. So what we have here is, come on, Penn. Okay. So in this column, we're looking at the sulfonate ending up in the para position. In the second column, we're looking at the sulfonate ending up in the ortho position. And in the third column, we're ending up, we're talking about the sulfonate in the meta position. Okay, so if we look, the sulfonate, the sulfonate group is very electronegative with no unshared pairs there. So it is a withdrawing substituent. So it tends to direct things meta to it. So if we look at this, if our original group is, a para, is directing para, then the sulfonate, you know, para things also tend to direct ortho. So this could direct ortho. This could direct meta. So if our sulfonate goes there, we might expect the nitro group to go here, right? Meta to the sulfonate, ortho to the nitrogen. And so then when we get the desulfonation, our nitro group would end up ortho to our original nitrogen. If our nitrogen is, acts as an electron donating group, but directs ortho, well, it also would direct para, and sulfonate would direct meta to itself. That would direct here. We might expect the nitro then to end up in this position, and after the desulfonation, we would end up with the para product. Right. So this was ortho, this was para. And if our original nitrogen is acting as an electron withdrawing substituent, then it might direct meta to itself, meta, and then both of these would direct meta to themselves if the nitro group can go on there, and so then we might expect the nitro group to go on the meta carbon, and then after desulfonation, the final nitro product would be meta. So by figuring out using the melting point, the orientation of our final nitro aniline
we can use logic to back calculate, back figure where the original sulfonate went, which tells us how the original group was directing. We can figure out, so from where the nitro group ends up, we can determine where the sulfonate group was in, in the intermediate that we didn't isolate, which tells us something about the way our original group directed the chemistry. And so that's the power of this laboratory, is that we can do all of these things just by knowing the melting point of our final nitroaniline product.